Welcome to the IMAX Grand Finale. I'm Max Kellerman. On tonight's show, we're talking NBA All-Star Weekend. The Yanks not playing defense for A-Rod, and we'll break out the best jock-in-the-box responses to the toughest question on earth, Beyonce or J-Lo. Joining me now is the best-selling author of Patriot Reign, Michael Holly. Michael, how you doing? Max, I'm doing well. Mark my words, one day we'll be compared to Seinfeld and the Jeffersons. Also on hand for our final show is Bill Wolf. Wolf, can you believe this is the final episode it's, of IMAX? It's hard to believe, Max. I hope your mom didn't take down those Ricky Schroeder posters from your room in her basement. No. <laughs> it's Rick Schroeder, Max. <laughs> and they're still there right above the cot. <laughs> First topic. Max, most people root for Duke the same way they root for you, if you know what I mean. And ironically, since you declared Duke the most dangerous team in the country because of your embarrassing man crush on J.J. Reddick, the Blue Devils have lost four of seven, including Thursday night's 67-65 loss at Virginia Tech. Congrats, Max, on emptying another bandwagon. <laughs> what I said about Duke then, I'll repeat here now. It's not that they're the best team in the country. It's that J.J. Reddick's outside shooting makes them the X factor in the tournament. I also, by the way, predicted that they'd lose to Vatek by two points. Remember that, Michael? And you're also a liar. It's not just about J.J. Reddick. It's also about Williams. It's about Ewing and Mike Krzyzewski. Why would you think a Mike Krzyzewski team is not going to be there for the final four? That's a good four, point. Oh, no, 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 no. They're not going to be there for the final four, Michael. They only have they one won't? big man. That, nah, that's Sheldon Williams. I think people overrated them once they went 15-0. and 0. Now, they're 3-4 and four in their last seven. That gives you a better look at Duke. I think they'd be doing very well with this collection. No, 15 make and what, what, what does their last seven games really indicate, Michael? It, 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 it indicates the strength of the ACC. Of course. Bill is keep telling, you know, Bill, all these people on the show talking about how strong the ACC is, and then when Duke struggles, you're saying, oh, Duke is look, overrated? Duke, no, no. Well, look, Duke is not lousy. That's not my point. But this Yeah, is why would a 15-0 and 0 start make people think they're good? <laughs> right. I, I can't imagine why people would think right. that. And you said that's not your point. What is your point? Yeah, exactly? what is your point? My, my what point is, your point? is this is fascinating. Next topic. Yeah, feel free to lose my phone number, Smellerman. The Midwinter <laughs> Sound and Fury, known as an NBA All-Star Weekend, starts Friday night with a rookie sophomore game, continues Saturday with the slam dunk and three-point contests, and concludes Sunday with the big game itself. Now, I remember thrilling to the festivities in my younger years. Of course, I also remember Willie McGee as a Hall of Famer, <laughs> thinking Michael Holly would never have short hair, Max. <laughs> right, you never know. Look, the NBA All-Star Weekend is great. The game itself, the rookie sophomore game, the three-point contest, they're all great. But come on, the king of all events is the slam dunk contest. Come on, Max, I like the dunk contest, and I still believe Dominique Wilkins was robbed in 1988. Oh, he was Michael not. Jordan Agreed. won, but Wilkins he should have won not. it. Yes, but he was. you know, the NBA All-Star Game is the best part of the weekend, Max, because it's the only sport out of the all, all the major ones that actually plays the game. Hockey, they do. Baseball, well, they hockey. don't. No. Baseball is more suited for the All-Star Game than basketball is, Michael. And basketball, they don't really play defense in the All-Star Game, meaning it's not a true test of what they do. On the other hand, the three-point contest, oh, Max. They're actually doing the best they can at what they're doing. Oh, they're boy, that's a, they're doing the best they can. At, Max. No, let me tell you something about the, the slam dunk contest. When, when Dr. J took off from the foul line and dunked that ball low those many years ago, it was like Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk at Motown 25. But yeah. He was already a star, but that catapulted him into mainstream consciousness. You're right, Max, but look how long ago that was. And how many times can you dunk? How many ways can you dunk a basketball? After a while, that, that format, gets, format gets very stale. Well, I don't know. Now, the the Webb the th came up with a new way. Vince Carter came up with a new way. Go ahead, Bill. The three-point contest has no subjective judging, and the greatest moment in All-Star Week. Oh. Okay, whatever. Next topic was Larry Bird calling the shot. Next Max, topic. you and Alex Rodriguez have two things in common. No, A-Rod isn't an egomaniac who throws like a girl, and he <laughs> doesn't spend his summers at Yiddish camp. <laughs> but he, like you, breathes oxygen to live, and he can't get his teammates to back him up. Boston's Trot Nixon called A-Rod out earlier this week for not being a real Yankee, and ex-Yank David Wells Join the chorus on Thursday, and the rest of the Yankees, Max, are conspicuously silent in A-Rod's defense. Hey, Wolf, Vox mitten kuppen der er. Yiddish insult. I'll translate it for you later. Calm down, Trot Nixon. Kurt Schilling, who's a Yankees killer, and especially David Wells, who's a true Yankees legend, they can speak their minds, they can say whatever they want, 
and there's nothing really anyone can tell those guys. Well, well Mac, that's a calm down everybody. No Yankees came to uh, Alex Rodriguez's defense. So what? Because they don't want to talk about this. Most of them said that's between Trot and A-Rod, and we're going to stay out of it. I don't have a problem with that at all. I do have a problem with the Red Sox talking about the Yankees. Worry about your own team. Don't worry about the Yankees and who's a true Yankee. Wolf, we don't care. Uh, Michael got it right when he said, so what? He should have just stayed right there. Listen, there's a whole country of people who simply does not care about the Red Sox and the Yankees. All you guys lined up on I-95 think it's the only thing that matters. And okay, wait. Yeah, Michael, wait, come hey, on. Let's talk, talk hey, Max, sense here. Yeah. Max, isn't it a whole country of people who don't care, not who doesn't care? Yeah. Isn't that like bad camera? <laughs> isn't it, 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 from the own slept upon guy? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Kurt Schilling, Michael, can say whatever he wants. What can you tell that guy? He beat them with Arizona. He beat them with the Red Sox. What He can say whatever Max, he wants. He I guess I'm just, I guess I'm just spoiled from the Patriots' success. You know, three <laughs> Super Bowls in four years. They don't talk about their opponents. They don't talk and trash. And David Wells, too. Themselves. The Yankees, he was begging to come back. The Yankees didn't take him back. They're going to live to regret that. Next topic. It turns out it ain't over until it's actually over, so stay tuned to this broadcast and... Don't give up all hope about the NHL season, Max. High-level sources report that Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, and union rep Trevor Linden are still in talks with league officials to try to revive a possible abbreviated 05 hockey season and playoff run, Max. Lemieux? That's it. Lemieux? That's Lemieux. how you say it. Just say Mario and be like everybody else. Michael, ironically, interest in hockey being played, I mean the actual games themselves, has never been higher among casual sports fans. The NHL needs to make this happen. They gotta strike while the iron's lukewarm. Oh, come on, Max, show some respect. I think intelligent people are finally coming to their senses here. They know it's better to have a season no matter how truncated. You know what that word means, by the way, I do. <laughs> yes, as in your height. Than to, have no, than to have no season at all. I mean, even if it's a 28-game season, you cannot drop out of the sports consciousness if you're the but, NHL. But, Michael, Michael, don't you think the league risks its credibility and risks being a bigger laughing stock if the commissioner comes on TV, declares the season over, the whole nation of Canada goes into a... Bill himself doesn't mind no. risking his credibility and being care. a laughing stock every That's day. Right. I don't care about embarrassment, Bill. The dumb thing to do was to cancel the season. The smart thing to do, no matter when you do it, is to bring that season back and not That's lose right. your core fans. You know what? The last time we talked hockey before this was Bertuzzi. Right. Before Bertuzzi, that, when right. the Stanley Cups, they're never in the first segment of any sports show, really. The Stanley Cup isn't this year. The Stanley Cup will be. No, if they won't. actually play no, the season. It won't. It'll make the first segment of sports shows. Yes, it will. You're, You're absolutely wrong. Interest has never been higher, as usual. Bill, I'll see you in about 15 minutes. Michael, I'll see you after the commercial break. What's next? Maxim. All right. And coming up, will Illinois join Indiana as a big, flat state with undefeated national championship basketball teams? Argument ahead, as well as, how does your choice as greatest athlete in the world, Mike Vick, feel about being the apple of your eye, Max? <laughs> The best damn sports show, period. Join Tom and John as they cut loose with the biggest stars in sports and entertainment. Weeknight on FSN. On the next Head to Head with James Brown. Right from the very beginning, Max Stress, when we fall short, we fall short as a team. But when we succeed, I succeed alone. God, I admire you, Max. And I can tell you, he fell short. Willie, you fell short. Welcome back to the segment we call Maxims, where I tell it like it is, and then argue with Michael Holly and, from Sirius NFL Radio, it's our good buddy, Adam Shine. Adam, thanks for coming on our final broadcast. Absolutely, Max. Where else would I be? Well, you, if we could have gotten a better guest, you would be, I don't know, oh, come at on. home. But don't worry. Else. Don't talk to Adam like that. You guys ready to go? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, remember the pause button. First topic. Among the many highlights of the storied history of IMAX was my clear and certain prediction last May that the Detroit Pistons would win it all. Remember that, Michael? I do oh, remember. You got lucky. That was really special. First maxim. The Detroit Pistons will repeat as NBA champs. Don't push it, Max. You got lucky with your prediction last year. This year, the NBA champion is going to be from Arizona in the desert, the Phoenix Suns. Why do people think... Especially the oh, way they just handled the Mavs last night, let Michael. Me, uh, let me tell you something, Max. They have the best starting five in basketball. They got the best point guard in basketball. They got one of the best un best big men in basketball in Amari Stoudemire. They're going to win the NBA championship. One easily. of the best big men. Michael, I'm going to give you the best big man. His name is Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> the the Miami Heat are winning an NBA title. They are the Lakers, but with better chemistry. 
Take a look at Dwayne Wade. He's blossomed into Kobe Bryant. He's a star. Tremendous role player. Stan Van Gundy is a Actually, the great best defense. big man in basketball is Tim Duncan. If you want to go with a no, team not. that's not the Pistons, you go with the Spurs. They look like the best team in basketball. The Pistons, granted, need to be firing on all cylinders in order to win. But they did it last postseason, and they're 20-7 and seven in their well, last 27 well, look, games. Look, can either of you guys answer this question? How do you match up with Nash? How do you match up with Marion? How do you match up with Stoudemire? Well, Dallas did it yesterday, it. Michael, at Phoenix How did it match up with Shaq? Matter. Where's the matchup yeah. with Shaq? But really, the Adam has a point there, Michael. You're talking matchups. It's the Shaquille O'Neal matchup that's Shaq the problem. Shaq court advantage. How did the Pistons do last year matching up with Shaq? The, <laughs> the Pistons? <laughs> that was a team. They're not a team. Next topic. Among the places I've flown over is Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. But even from 35,000 feet, it's clear to me at least that the Fighting Illini are the best college basketball team in America. Dee Brown, Darren Williams, Luther Head and company are 26-0 with only four games left. Last year's undefeated D1 team, St. Joe's, they didn't win the final, the whole, the whole thing, but they made it to the Elite Eight, guys. Next match, Illinois will be your 2005 NCAA champs. You see, Michael, let me tell you what he's doing here. The Bruce Weber interview is ultimately going to be the first thing on the IMAX DVD. <laughs> so he's deciding to go Illinois, please. D. Brown <laughs> interview, too. <laughs> exactly. North Carolina is winning a national championship this year. All the depth, all the talent. May McCants, Williams off the bench, and Roy Williams is finally going to win the but, big one. Uh, you know, you just, you just made my point for Illinois. Everything you just said about North Carolina, you can say about Illinois, except Illinois hasn't lost the game, Adam. D. Brown, I said it before, I want to be that guy. He's my hero. I love Darren Williams. I like Head. You see Powell earlier this week, 10 for 10 from the field. And, and, and wait, also, wait, Adam, wait. Adam, Roy Williams is not Bayhunt. He's not someone who's waiting a long time for a national title, but you know what? He's gotten in his own way. I mean, you can look at Roy Williams and say he has not coached well in big games. You can say that, but please, Michael tries to make this point, and don't do it. Don't tell me Illinois is undefeated as part of your rationale here. They because are. last Because last time I checked, the ACC and the Big Ten are totally different conferences. The and Big Ten clearly, State North Carolina is in a, in a tougher conference. Clearly, or not, not so clear anymore, they have the most NBA-ready talent. But you know what? They have not put it together to the extent that Illinois UConn has. UConn second half last Look Sunday. Look at the Wake Forest Next common opponent. Next topic. Next topic. You know what would be great for the Yankees? If they could only get a Sandy Koufax in his prime level starting pitcher, coming off maybe his best season ever, to anchor their staff. Oh, wait. <laughs> they got him. The Yanks added Randy Johnson in the offseason to go with Mike Messina, Carl Pavano, Kevin Brown, Jarrett Wright, the best reliever in the history of baseball, Mariano Rivera, and an all-star lineup. Not to mention Tom Gordon had one of the best seasons in baseball last year. Final maxim. The long drought will finally come to an end. The New York Yankees will at long last win their 27th World Series championship. Oh, Maxie and Adam, you Yankee lovers. You know what? You're right. The Yankees are a great team. Unfortunately, they play in the same division as the best team in baseball. Let's go, Red Sox. The Red Sox will win the division again. No, Why, Michael? Why? Michael, 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 Michael. Listen, first and foremost, I don't feel comfortable supporting the Yankees because Trot Nixon might, in fact, call me a clown. <laughs> I agree with Max. If I hear the chant 2,000, by the way, at Fenway Park, I'm going to throw up. Max is right. Look at the depth. Look at the pitching. Okay. Look at A-Rod in his... Michael, look at the bullpen. Why are the Red Sox going to win? Tom think... Gordon was lights out there. Of course, Mariano Rivera. They picked up Felix Rodriguez, Mike Stanton instead of Heredia. Okay. The Yankees are, are poised. Max, uh, look, the Red Sox picked up Edgar Renteria. They upgraded their lineup. Their lineup is better now. They lost Pedro and Derek Lowe last year. Okay, those guys didn't have great seasons. They picked up uh, Boomer Wells, who you love, Mac. Yeah, they love picked up Wells. Matt Clement. Wade Miller is a steal. I'm telling you, you they're the best I in the baseball I love Wells, still. but Matt Clement might be a loser. Wells is a winner, but he's four, over 40, and Matt Clement might well, be a loser. How old is Randy Johnson, by the way? How old is Randy Johnson? He just, he just should have oh, won oh, the Cy oh, Young oh, by, like, uh, by unanimously. Is he over 40 or not? Yes, he is. Thank you. Guys, thanks for joining me. Do you realize, by the way, Adam, Adam, there are two-year-olds who've never even seen the Yankees in a World Series? It's tragic. It makes me over Clint. Disgusting. Very special jock in the box is next. And coming up, which talented lady do our jocks in the box find more alluring? Mark Anthony's wife or the singer with Jay-Z for a guy? Max? Shoot ahead with James Brown next Monday on FSN. Well, this was my first job in TV. And early on, Max gave me a special assignment. He had me check his shoes for cockroaches. That experience is really going to help me in this business. True story. 
Welcome back to the IMAX finale. One of the things I love to do in our Jock in the Box segment was to ask our guest the age-old question. Beyonce or J-Lo? Here are some of our favorite responses. Oh. Oh. You want you want to say you want to say Beyonce? Yeah, J Lo is Latina know, got, from the Bronx. You gotta go with her. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. But you want to say I Beyonce? Wanna, no, I wanna, yeah, well, yeah. Jay's my man, so I mean, I can't disrespect Jay, you know. Ooh, okay. But I gotta take J Lo. Wow. Yeah. I gotta go Beyonce. Yeah. Okay. She's why? A total package. Just, total, total package. package. I'm sorry, yeah. Jay Z was. She's everything, man. Yeah. I just can't, you know, I can't really explain it. I just, I just like so, something about it I like. Oh, I could explain it, but maybe not on this show. This is a family <laughs> show, D. Beyonce. It's, it's a landslide for Beyonce. It's a landslide. Why, Carl? Why Beyonce? Because she can make it go uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Uh, Beyonce, man, Beyonce. Why? Because, I mean, she's... I mean, she can sing. <laughs> <laughs> and dance and do a few other things. Come on. It's because she's like 10 years younger, Nate. You can say it. It's nah, okay. I mean, J-Lo's hot. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's, I mean, there's no, no man in the world that passed J-Lo or Beyonce. J-Lo. J-Lo. You see, now that's interesting. The players tend to go with Beyonce, and the coaches tend to go with J-Lo. Coach, what, can, can you tell us why you took J-Lo? <laughs> uh, no, no, I really can't. Uh, she just impresses me. <laughs> yes, she's quite impressive, Coach. <sighs> J-Lo. J-Lo, really? Yeah. See, now all the college-aged athletes always say Beyonce. Why J-Lo? It's a thing for them Puerto Ricans. Beyonce. Just, nah, just like eh. that. Oh. Nah, nah, J-Lo. Oh, <laughs> we I had her know, switch man. there. Why? Why just You can't it lose. You can't, you can't lose. It doesn't even matter. J-Lo. J-Lo, look at that. Usually guys around your age, they take Beyonce. Why'd you go with J-Lo? <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, man, that's tough. Yeah, I have um, an idea why. I have an idea why you went with J-Lo. I feel the same way. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's well, 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 if you know, then it's self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm the same kind of guy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Heads I win, tails I win. <laughs> <laughs> Tough question. Yes, it is. What, what about both? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the shot that knocked out the champ. He couldn't answer it. It is. It's a. Uh, it's an. It's an unanswerable question, Arturo. Definitely, definitely is. But I would be stuck in between. I wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> <laughs> Welterweight champ Zab Judah gave the best answer. With Beyonce and J Lo, heads you win, tails you win. I gotta say, I'm still on the fence, though, over which one I would take. Just saw Gigli last night on cable. Woo, J-Lo smoking. Our, <laughs> our final knockout round is next. And coming up, will LeBron James join the dunk contest, or will he sit it out and watch others fly? Max? Watching FSN. About a month ago, after, after a particularly rough show for everybody, Max pulled me aside and just wanted to let me know. He said, Lane, I think you're doing a great job. And that, that meant a lot. Unfortunately, Lane is our guest booker, and my name is Steve. Never seen that guy before in my life. Okay, America, for the last time, it's the knockout round. Bill Wolf returns. What do you have to say for yourself, Wolf? Max, I hear you're more likable in person than you are on the show. I look forward to meeting you in person <laughs> someday. Michael? Do you realize they used to date a girl in Massachusetts who's better looking than J-Lo and Beyonce? Michael, you never dated a girl, period. Well, to email Wolf, me. best to get him at his personal address, <laughs> ugly at backhair.com, unless you've changed it, though. Oh, that's great stuff, guys. Thanks a lot. Paul in Dallas writes, the Mavs went into Phoenix and dismantled the Suns. That settles it. Dallas is officially the class of the Western Conference because, of course, everybody knows regular season NBA games, especially in the first half, that tells you the whole story. San Antonio Spurs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Carlos in Clayton, Missouri writes, the NL champion Cardinals opened camp today. I'm so proud of my cards, even though they never so much as held the lead in the World Series. By the way, first team ever to do that, so they are historic in a way. By the way, they're going to be much worse this year, Bill. Yeah, and they got a winning one. record against the Yankees in the World Series. Don't... Johan in Atlanta writes, Savannah State coach Ed Daniels was fired after his team went 0-28 this season. Ed's a heck of a basketball coach, 
and I know he'll land on his feet. Hey, Michael, does your youth team need a guy? Hey, I'll tell you what, that guy did a great job. So maybe, Put it in uh, Justice. Maybe you should call him. Injustice. Maury in New York City writes, Keanu Reeves' new movie Constantine came out today. There isn't a star in the galaxy I'd rather watch on the silver screen than the incomparable Mr. Reeves. Hey, wait a minute. Even Seattle, wait a minute. Right. They're a sponsor. What about Ryan Felipe? What's his name? Max, I'd like to settle a few things once and for all. Michael Vick stinks, LeBron is overrated, and Derek Jeter is a generic bore. Just thought you should know. And for the last time on this show, I will say, wrong, wrong, wrong. All right, well, wrong, wrong, wrong. I brought it back. No. I brought it home, don't, baby. Don't Get me love mail for the don't last one ever. It. It's really, it's really touching, Max. And here is some love mail for you oh, on our last really? show from Kevin in Redondo Beach, California, who writes, quote, Max, I'm flabbergasted that the best sports talk show of all time is coming to an end. Now you'll have to resort to raising Michael Holly <laughs> and telling him about the birds and bees before he gets his braces removed. Earmuffs, Michael. Even, even worse, you might have to stay busy by shaving Bill Wolf's repulsive Neanderthal back. A great era is over, and I'd like to say one last time for old time's sake, you suck, Max. <laughs> End quote. Now that's a goodbye. One last time for old time's sake. I see you're still reading Prompter well, Bill. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts to everyone at FSN for the opportunity to put on this show. We had a blast every single day. Well, everyone except Wolf, who's just miserable in general. <laughs> for the last time, for Michael Holly, Bill Wolf, and all of my guests, I, Max, say thanks for watching, everybody. See you down the road. Thanks for taking shots hey. at me right down the line. <laughs> second, what are Max? the birds and bees? What, what are we talking about, birds and bees? What earmuffs. I said earmuffs. Okay. Inappropriate. Tonight on a special edition of Totally Football QB Confidential. And I'll tell you what, if they do those things, they're going to win a lot more games because the pitching generally has given them an opportunity to win some games. Games that are four runs that they've given up and we've been trailing four to one or four to two and you know, all of a sudden, the bullpen comes in, and they give up a run here, and that's that. All right. Words of wisdom from B.J. Aaron Jackson, as they put the tarp on the field, they're going to take you to some alternative programming. That's from Greg Walker. All right. Nice. And the... Coming up, it's the best of full access. For the next half hour, we're hopping in the Wayback Machine to bring you some of our finest moments from years past. Today, we'll see two fresh-faced Bulls rookies out in the town. A former Sox closer hits the oval. Plus, the Ball Hawks hit Waveland Avenue, and we'll show you the piece that won full access an Emmy. Hard to believe, but true. You want the best of full access? We've got the best of full access right here. and welcome once again to Full Access. The best of Full Access, mind you. I am Tom Waddle, your host and master of ceremonies for the last seven or eight years. And today, we're going back, way back. We're talking a whole three years back, back to the halcyon days of 2001. What are the halcyon days? Don't know. It was then in that fateful summer that the Bulls drafted a couple of teenage big men, Tyson Chandler and Eddie Curry. And since we're full access and we do fun and silly stuff, we thought we'd break the two rooks in with a real Chicago experience. And who better to show the guys around than another Bulls big man, Mr. Bill Wennington. Kicking things off today, we go back to that wonderful afternoon. Ah, the memories. What's this? A limo pulling up to the United Center, the luxurious basketball palace on Chicago's west side. Who could be inside? We here at Lifestyles of the Tall and Famous can only imagine who rides in this sterling black carriage. But wait, Benny the Bull, Tyson Chandler, Eddie Curry? That can only mean one thing. This must be basketball royalty. And it is, as world-renowned round ball playboy Bill Wennington emerges. Fellas, what's up? 
Well, from Chicago, I figured that you guys didn't know your way around town a little bit, so I thought I'd take a few of the spots that, you know, that's old people hang out at. All right. So why don't we uh, jump in the car? Benny, you gonna come along and help us out? Excellent. <laughs> Let's meet today's guests, shall we? Up first, seven-footer Eddie Curry, the Bulls' newest center, a hometown boy from south suburban Thornwood. Eddie's waited through long 18 years and a trip up the Dan Ryan to make it to the big time. Then there's his West Coast counterpart, Tyson Chandler. Also topping the seven-foot mark, this Southern California boy is destined to bring a ray of sunshine to the cold Chicago winters. And lest we forget, the jolly old man of the sidelines, Benny the Bull. Benny, squeeze that derriere into the limo and let's begin the tour. All right, guys. Yeah. I'm going to take you out to, uh, Chicago's a big city, so I'm going to take you out to a couple places that I think you'll you'll enjoy. I know I enjoy them, because it's going to be tough for you guys to get around, because it was, you know, it was really hard for me to get around, because, it's you know, being a star in this town is really hard. A star? Surely he's kidding. Because when you're a star, it's really hard to go out, people bothering you, asking for autographs all the time, and it can be a hassle. So, you know, I'll show you some places that'll be real cool for you. Hey, who is this guy again? I think he played for the Bulls. The Magnificent Mile, where Chicago dreams are made. World-class culture and shopping awaits our four celebrities. But just what will strike the fancy of our men about town? All right, guys, this is a real poor place you guys probably get to know throughout the years, buying some clothes and stuff, so let's uh, take a look inside. See, it might be a special order department. Can we, uh, we have to custom order this guy? I'm sorry. Okay. Hey guys, look! Man, I'm seriously starting to doubt this guy played in the league. All right, guys, I got you. I got some nice clothes, you all dressed out. You got a nice pair of shoes. I'm gonna take you to a place now. It's just gonna be a lot of fun. I picked this place out special because it's all about games. We did an NBA. We're playing games here. I picked this place out. Oh, you no, picked no. it out, man? No, 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 no. Don't, don't listen to Benny. You don't know what he's talking about. I, I picked this place out. Ingenious. Moments of whimsy spent at Dave and Buster's. What better way to spend a carefree afternoon? Here it is, right here, the competition. I'll take the winner. You two kids play right here, and I'll be waiting for the winner, all right? The winner plays Grandpa. I know, fun. I want the big bucks bunny doll, please. How much would one of these, how many tickets would one of these be? But man cannot live on fashion and folly alone. These young men need sustenance. A world-class meal prepared by only the finest of chefs. It's been a fabulous day so far. One can only imagine what culinary card Bill hides up his sleeve. Hey guys, glad you could come out, just thought, you know, blow off some steam, pick up some clothes, and uh, just hang out and have some fun. Glad we had a good time. I'll see you around. Denied! Gotta go. Hey, hey wait. How about dinner? What about dinner, man? Yeah, uh, I gotta go, guys. See you later. Hey, dinner. dinner! Disappointing indeed. Hey, did you ever get that guy's name? Phil, Phil, what? Hey, what's your name again? <laughs> Will Purdue. Will Purdue or not, that was a dastardly way to conclude our day. So let this be a lesson to you boys. No one ever said the lifestyles of the tall and famous would be fair, and the NBA will be even harder. But I say welcome. Welcome to Chicago, and welcome to the professional ranks, rookies. Now that, my friends, is comedy. But for some strange reason, Bill never was asked to escort any other Bulls rookies around after that. Here's a little tidbit of information that you probably didn't know and likely won't really care about, but I'll tell you anyway. That annoying British voiceover guy, none other than our very own John Lassange, one of our former editors, who is neither British nor annoying. Team effort here at Full Access. I don't know why I told you that, but it's written in my prompter, so I echoed it. Everyone contributes here on the big show, and you, the viewer, reap the rewards. Keith pulled through a nasty changeup, but he couldn't hit the gas when necessary. Coming up, the Farmer Sox closer takes to the racetrack. Introducing the all new Chevy Malibu. With innovative and exclusive features the competition doesn't offer. 
Now you can get into one and leave your checkbook behind. Qualified lessees can now lease a Malibu sedan for around $2.29 a month with zero due signing. Tax title license and dealer fees, extra residency restrictions fly. Call for important lease details. The all-new Chevy Malibu. Turn the key. Start a revolution. See your Gulf Coast Chevy dealer today. Looks great. One week. Call Empire today for custom windows and vinyl siding in a week. Our energy-efficient windows feature self-cleaning glass. Our vinyl siding is durable and maintenance-free. You'll save time and money. Plus, no payments for a year. And get a free gift. Call Empire today. One week. Done. What were we waiting for? 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. Well, team chemistry is something that every team is looking for, not every team has. And the best way I could describe it is when you're so in tune with your teammates that you know what they're thinking before they even say a word. And it's in the bat rack. Sorry about that. Team chemistry, it's what every team needs to win. Introducing IMAX, a half hour of sports news like never before. That void in sports news is now filled. Diverse guests, smart analysis, and challenging questions. It's just my opinion, but I'm right. IMAX with Max Kellerman. Smart, funny, and always opinionated. Tonight on FSN. Sun like it hot, really hot. Still not as hot as our sizzling summer sales event. Now at Arlington, Lexus, and Palatine. Right now, get the incredible RX 330 for just $4.29 a month. Plus, get our super hot service that includes a service department open to 11 p.m. weekdays. Superior service without exception. Bob Roman, Arlington, Lexus, and Palatine, just one block west of Route 53 on Dundee Road, Palatine. Yes, the summer of 2001. The White Sox were battling the Twins and Indians for the AL Central crown. Not really. Jose Canseco and David Wells wore the silver and black, and a young reliever named Keith Folk was establishing himself as one of the best closers in the game. During his stay in Chicago, Keith was one of the good guys, always willing to talk and have fun with the full access crew. And that's how we evaluate guys as being good guys. They like us. One sunny day, we decided to indulge Keith in one of his hobbies. And we took him down to the local racetrack and hooked him up with professional driver Paul Tracy. We've said it before, folks. We'll say it again. Athletes love fast cars. This guy guns down batters by throwing in excess of 90 miles per hour. Yes! Meanwhile, this guy guns the gas, taking his car above the 220 mile per hour mark. So why is it that White Sox closer Keith Folk and IndyCar driver Paul Tracy have a mutual respect for each other? They have a need for speed. Both being, uh, you know, basically top of what we do. And, uh, you know, I followed Paul for a while. He's kind of the, kind of the bad boy, the, the bunch. He's kind of out of the ordinary a little bit. But, uh, I mean, he's one of those guys who goes out there, drives hard, and, uh, and that's what I like. Keith is great at what he does, and, and but he enjoys what he's doing. So, it's, you know, it's, it's cool because I'm young. You meet some other younger guys in different sports, and they're just having fun. The two met in Chicago today, and each seized the opportunity to toil each other's trade. Keith, who despite the fact he's in the save business, just couldn't resist the urge to play with danger at the Chicago Speedway. Yeah, I enjoy having fun, and that's why, you know, I look forward to coming out here and uh, meeting Paul and kind of running around some of these cars and seeing, uh, you know, seeing how the other half lives. Traffic. That's the only thing that kind of brought me the same lap. His <laughs> wife was playing blocker for him. <laughs> Paul may be Canadian, but has a fascination to take part in America's pastime. So he got a straightaway of 60 feet, 6 inches, to throw out the first pitch at Comiskey Park. I think he wants to sit behind the plate and he's going to throw a pitch at me. By the end of the day, both athletes realize that whether they're driving a car or throwing a pitch, there's a lot in common. 
They have to keep it straight. Pitching and racing, it's it's all about finesse. Try to score high numbers on the radar gun. You can't uh, crack under pressure either. Pressure's on, you have to be able to perform. And they both have a team behind them that ultimately counts on them for victory. You screw around for two hours, and it comes down to the last five, ten minutes most of the time. And, uh, you know, that is real similar, but... Uh, like you said, the margin for error is, is very slim. Actually, there are more similarities than you might think. One mistake by Folk, and his pitch might end up over the wall. One miscue by Tracy, and his car could be in the wall. But fortunately for the talent level of these two guys, the likelihood of those scenarios are a rare occurrence. Their line of work is a lot more dangerous than ours. And, uh, you know, hey, they go out there, they're fearless. He's also got the... 11 other pitchers, he said, that can help them out. So for me, <laughs> there's nobody else that's trying to help me out. They're trying to take my job. So would these athletes ever like to really trade places? I don't think I'm ever going to think about playing baseball. Oh, and I'm done with baseball. You will uh, you may not see me on the weekends, but I'll be at a track somewhere. All right, now here's the thing I'm wondering right now. I was once an athlete. I like fast cars. Why am I never invited to any of these racing shoots? Anyone? We've seen Blackhawks, White Sox players. Everyone is in the car running the risk of injury, and destroying their livelihood. I don't have those things to worry about anymore, but yet I'm never behind the wheel. What have we been doing the last few years, huh? This piece was so good, it won us an Emmy. Coming up after the break, we revisit the puck incident. Max Madsen Mitsubishi announces the best back cars in the world event. Get a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty and roadside assistance. Five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty on every new 04 Mitsubishi. Receive three years or 45,000 miles of scheduled maintenance. Zero percent financing or cash back from $1,000 to $5,000 on new 04 Mitsubishi, including Endeavors and Galants as well as remaining 03s. Wake up and drive to Max Madsen Mitsubishi, Downers Grove Countryside, and Aurora Naperville. next party or sporting event, pick up our family and party mix-ups. We're open late for your next occasion. Call or visit any Chicagoland Mr. Submarine. Robert Morris College is one of the largest private colleges in the state. We awarded more bachelor's degrees in business management than any other private college in Illinois. A school where everything is cooking where students design a path towards their future and turn their dreams into reality. A college that will test one's inner strength and create a competitive attitude. It all leads to a collegiate experience that's like no other. Robert Morris College. Real college for the real world. teaching your child to ride a bike in the neighborhood, celebrating birthdays and holidays. Each one of these special moments begins at home. As Chicagoland's number one home seller, Coldwell Banker Residential Brokerage knows the importance of finding the ideal home for our clients. Our realtors are simply the best in the business and will be with you every step of the way. Coldwell Banker Residential Brokerage serves every community throughout Chicagoland. Visit coldwellbankeronline.com to find an agent near you. Welcome back to the show. All right, here's some words you don't often hear together. The Emmy Award-winning Full Access. Yes, over the years, we've sent plenty of submissions to the local chapter of the National Television Academy, only to see our hopes dashed by those jerks over at 190 North. Not this time, people. Oh, no. This particular piece was titled The Puck Incident. It revolved around the Blackhawks' Steve Sullivan, an arrogant fan, and a severe case of karma biting you in the rear. And it was too good to be denied. Roll the tape, please. Just a mere 1,000 miles down this desolate highway known as I-80, a pathway paved with lonely truck stops and sometimes unfriendly, mean, mean, stucky waitresses, lies what is commonly known as the Pepsi Center, home of the Colorado Avalanche. 
story you're about to see is real. No clever editing. 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 No sales pitches. No gimmicks. That's Bush League, man. The date. January 26th. The place? The Pepsi Center. In Denver, Colorado. Blackhawks versus the Avalanche. It's a story we call The Puck Incident. The participants. Blackhawks star forward Steve Sullivan. Insensitive Avalanche fan whose identity will remain anonymous. Damn it. The incident occurs as if there were any normal stoppage in play due to an injury. Off forward, Steve Sullivan is accidentally hit in the face by an opponent's stick. Take another look. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Obviously in pain, he makes his way back to the bench. But before he can get there, his attention is grabbed by a drunken heckler who couldn't resist kicking Sullivan while he was down. Who's talking to I was just skating back to the bench and uh, in some fan, and obviously you could see he had a few beer in him. I thought it'd be pretty funny to make fun of my nose, and uh, that was bleeding pretty bad. <laughs> it was funny, and I'd do it again. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday. You better believe it, silly rabbit. Fix it for kids. I thought that was just rude at the time. You know, when the player goes down, you just kind of, you know, you just have to get up. I thought it was rude, big sissy. So it appears as our heckler has gotten the last laugh for now, but as you'll soon find out, there are two more chapters to be written. Later in the second period, Sullivan's course of retribution would begin when he would single-handedly alter the score by recording two shorthanded goals in 51 seconds. And then I was able to get a, a couple breakaways. You know, that was the first one, and then 50, 50 some seconds later, I get another breakaway and able to score again to make it 3-2. And that just put us back in the hockey game. That's what we were all happy about. Little did our joker behind the glass realize he not only awoke the fiery passion in number 26, Damn it. but he would soon learn the meaning of the word karma. The same man who earlier heckled Sullivan for getting injured is then hit by a stray putt, which lands directly on top of his dome. Not, it's not even one in a million. It's got to be worse than the chance of him getting hit. So just what were the odds? We asked the expert. The first thing we did was we figured out there were 9 million deflective square feet in the arena. We also figured out the average human head is one square foot. We then figured out there were 18,000 humans in the arena. Moving did on. Did I the iron? That's it. 9 million divided by 1, divided by 18,000, multiplied by the constant Z, the constant Z. Russell Crowe, the best actor. Yeah, right. We came up with that number to determine what's the odds of this puck hitting you in the face. So break it down for me. Tony Amante uh, saw it. He was on the glass when, when Patrick left through it by him, and he was looking to see where the puck was going and saw it was the guy that got hit. And he just turned around and looked at me, and he was like, Sully, you, it's the same guy. Well, I shot the puck around the glass, and... Uh, it was just high enough to get over my head, so when I turned and looked, it hit the right guy on top of the head. So it was kind of funny. So, uh, you know, I don't think Steve really realized that the puck had hit the guy that was, it was tormenting him. So I went over and I said, Sully, you gotta, you gotta give this guy a little zing back. So let this particular case serve as fair warning to potential hecklers out there who feel their ticket stub gives them free reign to do and say as they feel. Remember, what goes around comes around. Until next time, I'm Mitch Robbins. How about that, folks? Very nice work by the Full Access crew. A special round of applause goes out to our former associate producer and comedy genius, Jim Gorman, who was the driving force behind that little piece. See, I bet you didn't know that. People thought Jim just used to come out here and read the email and be all silly and stuff, but there was some talent hidden in there, and the folks at CNN are realizing that now, or they're really upset with having hired him. You have to dig deep, but talent is there nonetheless, people. Our first and only Emmy, hard to believe, in eight years. These guys will do anything to get a baseball. When Full Access returns, we're hitting Waveland Avenue. Creating Chicago's best pizza begins with selecting the best ingredients. The best tomatoes, vegetables, meats, and cheeses all come together to create Giordano's famous stuffed pizza, which is why we wouldn't think of serving you anything but the best. 
from pizzas to the freshest salads, soups, spaghettis, lasagna, chicken, parmesan, and much more. Giordano's, where being the best isn't just a slogan, it's a Chicago tradition for nearly 30 years, Giordano's famous stuffed pizza. Some like it hot, really hot. Still not as hot as our Sicily summer sales event at Arlington Acra in Palatine. Right now, get the 265 horsepower, seven passenger 2004 MDX for just $4.99 a month. There's only one, Bob Roman. Bob Roman's Arlington Acre in Palatine, just one block west of Route 53 on Dandy Road, Palatine. Hotter than that! I think I'm gonna like it here. Oh yeah, you are. Looks great. One week. Call Empire today for custom windows and vinyl siding in a week. Our energy efficient windows feature self-cleaning glass. Our vinyl siding is maintenance free, plus no payments for a year. One week, done. What were we waiting for? Order now and get two two-for-one coupons to any participating Six Flags theme park. Come on, it's playtime. Call Empire today. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. Is it true that you guys do more brake jobs than anyone else? Yes. And are my pads and shoes really guaranteed for as long as I own my car? Yes. Even if it's 20 more years? Absolutely. Do you ever cry at weddings? No. It's peak driving season. Come to Midas for great value and service every day. Lifetime guaranteed brake pads or shoes are just $89.95 installed. And they're guaranteed for as long as you own your car. For mechanics known for their work and their word. Trust the Midas touch. You see it all the time. Sammy Sosa hits a home run out of Wrigley Field. It bounces on Waveland Avenue and a mob of lunatics trample each other to get their hands on the baseball. Who are these crazy street people? What makes them tick? And are they that bored standing around all day that they beat each other up for a baseball? These are very important questions. Questions that can only be answered by the crack full access crew. The full access crack crew? You tell me. Okay, now you're going to have to school me here a little bit. I came out here because after Jim talked to you yesterday, it sounded exciting. I want to come out here. So what are some of the things I need other than my glove here by my boy, Jim? Yo, Jim. So what are some of the things I should know about being out here to try to catch up? For a rookie, I'm a rook. I'm a rook. If I was a rookie coming out here, first of all, I wouldn't come out here unless I could catch. Well, I, I can catch. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. Catch. I put the glove would, on the right hand. I would, I would find out who some of the pros are out here. Okay. And I would get an observation of how they handle it. Okay. You know, kind of shadow them like a lot of these guys did when they were kids all shadowed me. Now they're big boys, some of them bigger than me. So tell me some of the secrets here. I'm a rook. I know I look like a rook here. I don't look like you, but you know, give me give me some tips here of what I should do to make it at least seem like I might get a ball today. Go inside. <sighs> okay, well, is it, okay, there's a sweet spot on the bat. Now, is there a sweet okay. spot to stand out here? Well, this isn't good for me to tell this. You know? Oh, come on, I'm a rookie. You're a rookie. That's okay, wait a, rookie. wait a second. Wait, wait a second here. We're we're good. talking cash here. Is that what we're talking? Do you take credit cards? I got some cash, credit cards. What what do I have to do to get the? Uh, Hey, uh, I got a, I I got a CTA I ticket cash. here. I how, about a, how about a Fox Sports Net get you in the door thing? Well, look at these knees. That's what I want a shot of here. Look at that knee. Look at that knee. What is this about? <laughs> this isn't like friendly whatever oh, here. No, it's here man. So, so, so how'd you get that? Oh, I was a catcher in college. Ah, oh, okay. But I know you got that today. I let the league in uh, stitches the last two years. How much does that hurt? Don't feel a thing. Don't feel a thing. Okay. As long as you got the ball, it's okay. The ball, it's okay. Somebody told me, was it Jim that told me you hurt your, your ligament on Sammy's 62nd? Oh, yeah, my thumb for two years was still torn up. That's where I got to his Cunningham, the guy who got it, bent it back and pulled it all the way back, and that's not that the ball came out with it. You know, got it and bent it all the way back. And for two years, I was still rubbing it right in there. It tore, tore the ligaments all up on it. Was it worth it? <laughs> you know what? If I broke my ankle well, yesterday like Rich did, it would still be worth it. Now, now since I'm a rookie, and uh, you know, would you let me get one? No. Just so you, you got seven today. I'll tell you the you, stand, stand farthest away from anybody with a glove. I've you, got a glove? See the kid right there? Uh-huh. Right next to him. Oh, you're, you're talk, he's talking trash to me right now. Did you hear that, Jim? 
He's talking trash. He's telling me to go over by the little kid. But I'll tell you a little secret. Uh oh, here it comes the secret. Out here. There'll be 200 people out here. There'll be eight of us regulars. If they hit 20 balls out, the regulars are going to end up catching 19. It's just the way it is. And not that you're bragging. I'll play. No, no, it's experience. <laughs> Look at that. See, I caught one. There you go. Yeah, we got one. Great idea, Mr. Producer. Like, we ever had a shot at coming out here? Take your glove. Ever had a shot to come out here in the street and catch a ball? You gotta try something. Yeah, well, sure, it didn't work. Hey, what was that? Don't worry about it. The other team's up. You'll have to throw it back anyway, Jeff. All right, I'd love to tag that story, but we're running out of time. We'd love to get to a couple of our viewer emails. Email! Yeah! Come back and change. Pat Probably Reedy works. visits us again. Sox Audio Plus, you may be familiar with my work. Hmm? Hmm? Why don't you get familiar with a tic tac? Get going. From Alex, can you keep full access on the air next year? We would love to. Unfortunately, we have no say over that. Gabrielle. It's been fun for eight years. Gabrielle, how many years do you think Ozzy would be here if... I think he's one of the best. I think he's one of the best as well. I think he should have an open-ended contract and stay as long as he wants. All right. The Chief! Hey, Tom, what do you think the Cubs will and should do with their closer position? You know what I say they do? What's that, Tom? Give Kyle Farnsworth a shot at it. The Farns! Hey! Bet right. the Farns. Is that bet? And I'm sitting now. Okay. From Abby, what do you mean your show is ending? Hey. We, have, we, have, we have some very concerned viewers, hey. all five of them. It's from Tina. From Tina. Some friends and I were wondering if the hottie John Garland has a girlfriend. Uh, I don't care. That's going to do it for us. That's if you'd like to write in, just head to the address on the screen right there, fsnchicago.com. Mm -hmm. Hit the Ask the Crew link. Yep. Type away. That's going to do it for us today. He's Pat. I'm Tom. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Got you. <laughs> Chevrolet from R.I.P.T.A. Attention Chicago land. This is your chance to buy like a GM supplier and buy below invoice right now. RZA Chevy is offering GM supplier pricing to the public. Brand new Chevys at GM supplier prices. And you keep all incentives at GM supplier prices. And you keep all incentives only at RZA Chevy in Bridgeview. Buy your Chevrolet from R.I.P.T.A. RZA Chevrolet. When it comes to price and selection, Joe Rizza Ford is the only place to go. Right now at Joe Rizza Ford, you can own a brand new 2004 Ford Taurus at this incredibly low Joe Rizza price. Joe Rizza Ford makes you number one. Joe Rizza Ford, 159th Street in Orland Park and 22nd in Harlem in North Riverside. Fox Tigers, Sunday at 11.30 on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Comerica Park as we were just about to start the top of the fourth inning. Sox trailing 2 0 on a two run homer by Dimitri Young in the first inning off John Garland. All of a sudden, the rain started falling harder and they have put the tarp out there and they have not moved. So we're going to wait things out here. Meantime, we're going to take you to some more alternative programming. And this time it's going to be Sports List. The rivalry is totally intense. And look out! Everyone hates the Raiders. They got the fans stabbing people. We're not worried about the Sacramento Queens. It's always fun to watch. It's always a high-scoring game. Bucky <laughs> did. Oh, the Cubs suck. The Cardinals. I could never have sex with a Dallas Cowboys fan. Where do the whores hang out in the city? You know things have gotten out of control. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you in the face. Right. Slit your throat. There's a fight on the floor. We hate you, Boston. Check, please. Welcome to the Sports List. I'm Summer Sanders. Tonight we are celebrating contempt, saluting ill will, and honoring hatred. Oh, sounds good. Yes, we are counting down the top ten rivalries in professional sports. For the first three decades of their rivalry, the Yankees and Mets only battled for placement on the back pages of New York tabloids. But with the advent of interleague play, the teams began making up for lost time and make our list at number ten. Whoa! <laughs> 
Baseball's everything in New York. Either you're a Yankee fan or you're a Med fan. The rivalry is totally intense. And when you hear someone from New York say, yeah, I like the Yankees and the Mets. No, 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 no. You like the Yankees or the Mets. Mets fans love to complain about the Yankees, and I just turn to my go, you guys seem to forget the 80s. Mets were the team in the 80s. You know, the Yankees were not playing well. It is game one of the 2000 World Series. When the New York Mets played the Yankees in the World Series, and that was huge. The Mets playing the Yankees, a city divided. You have families sitting on one side of the couch, or one side of the living room, debating who was better. Down 1-0 in the series, Mets catcher Mike Piazza, who had taken Roger Clemens deep and paid the price, once again stared down his nemesis. Piazza threw a bat at him. He threw it right back, like What are you talking about? Roger Clemens up on this mound. I got more Cy Youngs than you got.